אנחנו רוצים לצרף אלינו את דוברת ארגון הבריאות העולמי, מרגרט, דוקטור מרגרט האריס. Hello, good morning, דוקטור האריס. Good morning. So, דוקטור האריס, how optimistic are you in light of Pfizer's announcement? It's very encouraging news, but it's... simply a signal at the moment so we haven't seen the full data and remember these are interim results but certainly it's encouraging to hear these results coming through and we expect to hear more results from other the other candidate vaccine development groups we've got another 10 that are in the final stages what do you hear in the who from uh, pfizer uh, uh, What do we hear about Pfizer? I'm sorry, I didn't yes, quite catch up. Yes, about Pfizer's your... vaccine is something that we don't know. Oh, so what we know is that um, this particular vaccine has gone through a trial and they have e- examined their results after they saw that 94 of the people in their trial had uh, a- a developed COVID-19 and they found that most of those people were in the group that got the dummy vaccine, not the candidate vaccine. So that gave them an, a-, a sense of... that the candidate vaccine was protecting mo- a, a large number of people. But there's much more work and much more um, assessment of the data that needs to be done. Uh, will, you rec- will you recommend Israel to purchase uh, Pfizer's vaccine or maybe to wait uh, for Moderna's uh, results? So there will be a number of candidate vaccines. As I said, there are 47 altogether in development and 10 in the final stages, and they will all come through. What we have is a COVAX facility, which is a system which will uh, take up any of the candidate vaccines that prove to be safe and, and have worthwhile ef- effectiveness, and we will distribute them around the world at the same time. Can you estimate yeah. when we'll be able to carry out a mass uh, vaccination uh, in the world? So the first thing that will happen and should happen is that the healthcare workers will be vaccinated. So we should look at prioritizing the, the groups that really need it. Now, the healthcare workers are the people that are most exposed to the virus. They see people with the virus every day. And they're also the people who stand between life and death for us. They keep us alive. And I see in Israel, and you've, you've managed to do... extraordinary work you've sadly lost people but you've also saved many lives mm. uh, so the healthcare workers should be vaccinated first and then next the people who are in the highest risk groups so the people who are most vulnerable to this disease so the mass vaccinations we will see later um, later possibly not later. even next year next year are you talking about the spring uh, the next summer? I would say at the end for the mass vaccinations for the people who are at lower risk, that will be the end of next year or maybe even 2022. Mm. Um, are you going to try to uh, impact to influence uh, the distribution uh, of uh, Pfizer's, Moderna and other companies' uh, uh, vaccination? We have something called the COVAX facility, and that's where all the countries have joined together, have joined this. 80, I think more than 80% of countries have joined this. And this, we will take up any of the vaccines that prove safe and efficacious and provide them to the different countries at the same time. Because the critical thing is, until everyone's protected, until everyone's safe, nobody's mm-hmm. safe. Okay, let's talk about uh, the second v- wave uh, in Europe. How concerned are you, Dr. Harris, uh, about the situation in Europe? Uh, we saw uh, some more countries uh, that are uh, entering into the lockdowns. Yes, it's very concerning. Uh, last week, we had more than 3 million new cases in the world, and more than 50% of those came from Europe. We're also seeing a very serious outbreak, um, a big uptick in cases in the United States of America. Mm-hmm. Sadly, they're losing more than 2,000 people per day. Mm-hmm. Um, so, indeed, Europe particularly is suffering, many countries are suffering a very intense acceleration. And they are having to go to very stringent measures to stop the movement in the population, stop the gatherings in order to bring the infection rate down. But the critical thing is once you finish those stringent measures is to keep on doing the things that stop the transmission so that you really stamp on those embers. But maybe lockdowns on every uh, three or four months are in- inevitable, like in Israel. No, they're not inevitable. We've looked at East Asia, they've not had to do that. So what is critical is you've done a very good job in Israel, and I congratulate everybody in Israel for the hard work you've done. Now make the most of it. Now is the moment to say, okay, we've 
brought our numbers down. Let's keep doing the things What that should we do have. now in Israel, Dr. Harris? You must keep the, the physical distancing. So really be, be serious about not being in close together. Make sure you're not in closed spaces. So when you gather together, if, you're, if you gather together, keep those gatherings small. Open a window. If you have any festivals, again, do it safely. Uh, wear a mask when you're together. Always wash your hands. These things sound simple, but they're a lot harder to, harder to do, we now find, when we're all trying to do them. The other thing is, if you are infected, even if you don't feel ill, I mean, remember, 30% of people who, who get infected don't feel sick. Make sure you genuinely self-isolate for two weeks. And if you're a contact of somebody infected, make sure you go into quarantine for two weeks. Yes. This is how you stop this virus from so transmitting. So Europe should look up to uh, East Asia, not uh, up to Israel. Europe should look at every, any example of where it's working. That's the point of us, us being a, a global community. And that's our job, of course, in WHO. Get all the good examples, learn from each other, appreciate each other. And we are seeing this. You know, as the world works together in solidarity with this science, we're really delivering solutions. So uh, at the moment, uh, you're um, encouraged by the uh, situation in Israel? Yes, it's very encouraging. And just keep up the good work. Now, this is a critical moment when you've really brought down your transmission rates. Keep on bringing them down. But people shouldn't think, oh, it's over. It's not. Now it's the really hard work to make the most of your achievements. Yes. So it feels like you're getting to the finish line, but it's not the finish mm -hmm. line. It's a watering stop. Keep going. Not a finish line. Okay, Dr. Margaret Harris, thank you so much. Thank you so much. That's a pleasure.